not even the irony, what are the odds that one brother who just won the Academy Award for Best Picture would make a movie yeah. about the making of the bomb that the next brother drops and yeah. ends the world? What, 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 That's in the insane. same like, year, also, man, in the same what? year. Ain't much stage clean up here, Volte. Well, now that is a very small drop in a very, very large bucket of drugs. It is something that, um, it is a genre that I absolutely love. I love watching Westerns. Yeah. And I love being in a Western. Uh, you know, I, I would love to be in the in a, a, a mafia movie, but nobody's going to cast me <laughs> in a mob movie set in New York City. You know, right? <laughs> so I have that. You know, they're not going to cast right. that dude in a Western, uh, which is uh, you know one of the most iconic. The cowboy is one of the most iconic images yeah. uh, in, in, in American culture. Look at the Western elements that are weaved into this are weaved in in such an organic way um, in, mm. in, the, in the past. And so it isn't gratuitous. It isn't just like, oh, we want this to be cool. It is predicated on the experiences of Cooper Howard. And that will really make sense as the story moves along. Then you think about uh, Lucy's experience, the vault dweller, and when, you know, the, the ghoul meets her, her naivete is, he's, it's not the first person that he's met, but her naivete is just it's irritating. <laughs> like, everything about her is irritating. Doesn't really listen to anything that she so says. Peppy. And then, you know, when he is forced to, and only when he is forced to keep her alive, mm -hmm. right? Which it wasn't malicious when he was going to kill her. Right. It really wasn't from. It wasn't an act of violence. It's not. That's how uh, anesthetized he is to the violence around him that he's seen. Right? right. But you have her experience. You have the ghoul who has seen it all, and then decides to you know to mess with her throughout this entire experience. Yes. And then you have M M Maximus, right? Who's only. What is he? Thirty-two years old. So he's experienced yeah, life on the wasteland, yeah. but for, you know, as a, as a as a child, and understands mm -hmm. he's looking for courage, right? He's looking for a purpose and a place in this world. There are three very unique experiences uh, in this iteration of uh, yeah. of Fallout, and uh, and it's 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 very cool to see the world from those three perspectives. I'm not a gamer. Uh, my son right. is a gamer. Uh, he plays Skyrim. Uh, I was not, I had heard about Fallout, but I didn't know anything about the world. And um, and once this uh, offer kind of came my, my way and this all worked out, I uh, intentionally decided not to, to play the game for a very specific reason. You know, I, I thought yeah. that there needed to be someone at the table who was ju judging these stories uh, without the responsibility of holding up the mantle for the players themselves. Just based on the merit of, well, you know what, this doesn't, I, I don't care that this represents this in the game. It doesn't make sense. It's not landing emotionally for me. So, so and the, the writers and everybody, the, everybody had the players' backs uh, and the story's backs. And so and it was a very collaborative process and I just love them all, you know. You know, maybe if we were smarter, we'd be more daunted. But uh, but part of like maybe why we were selected is we were just guileless enough to uh, to wander into this. I, I, you know, I, I think you just approach. I mean, this is all of television now. You kind of you make it almost to feed the conversation online, and uh, it's part of the deal. Uh, you know, I'm I'm kind of like welcome the discourse because it's so. Uh, 
vividly replicates the, the factionalism as represented in the games. Uh, people disagreeing over, it's this one, it's this one, this is the only one for me, and you know, I think it's all fun and it's all part of it. Um, well, we knew we wanted to do uh, pay homage properly to the structure of a lot of the games, which is the Vault Dweller leaves the vault and goes to the wasteland for the first time. Um, but with Lucy in particular, I think what we were interested in um, was that she comes from, uh, we kind of wanted to make fun of ourselves as, uh, as you know, we were writing this uh, during COVID and we were, you know, sort of in our own version of a vault, right? We were hiding at home, uh, you know, not doing our own grocery shopping. And that felt like we were shitty versions of what we were shitty vault dwellers, like while other people were, were um, taking risks for us out on the street. <laughs> and we, we felt like assholes and, um, we were interested in kind of playing with a version of that uh, with our vault, which is like, you know, this is a vault that really prides itself on everyone's nice, everyone's polite, they all love doing the right thing. And Lucy very much manifests that. And she goes to the surface thinking, I'm such a good person. And then she sees like, oh, fuck, like, you know, if I really need something up here, I might have to turn to violence. And am I really, am I willing to do that? And I think it's, you know, what we were interested in playing with was kind of like, how is morality a privilege? Uh, mm -hmm. Or how how do those overlap? And how, um, what's the relationship between those ideas? Um, and, uh, you know, how fast will Lucy be, you know, quote unquote corrupted, but actually it's just because she uh, is experiencing want for the first time. And, and so she needs to hold back on her judgment perhaps of the surface dwellers. Yes, there's a list, but uh, did we get to it all? No, uh, <laughs> because uh, we hope uh, we kind of took the attitude that uh, look, we're not going to be able to get to everything. It's eight hours of television. We, as Geneva mentioned, it's like thousands of hours of gameplay over 25 years. There's no way uh, we we want to um, evoke. We want the show obviously to live in the world of Fallout, but we weren't able to get to every single touchstone because there's just too many and. Um, Part of the process was, you know, deciding to do a few things as well as we can and not just do the shitty version of it all in, in eight episodes and, and have it feel like a, a listicle kind of like, and now this, and now this, and now this, um, that we're just sort of rifling through touchstones. Um, so in success, we'll, you know, if we're so lucky as to get a second season, we'll do another handful of things as best we can and, and so on and so on as we go. And, and grow out the world uh, that way, um, if we are so lucky as to get a season two.